This week I'm going to show you how to create a very simple table-based website. Table-based websites used to be the standards before cascading style sheets were widely supported by browsers. And they were pretty much the standard till around 2006-2007 and some sites are still created this way because they do work and they work well. I want you to do your first complete website table-based because it's important to understand the old technology. There's a good chance in web design that if you are asked to recreate a site, you'll be taking a table-based site and moving it into a site that's based on cascading style sheets. So it's important for you to know how it works. I'm going to show you the website. I have a very, very simple site and it's actually based in a two-column, three-row table, but I have merged these table cells in two of the rows. So I have a footer, which is one table cell going across two columns, and I have a header, which is one table cell going across two columns. This image was done in Photoshop where I added the text Travels with Seamus. I have my links in the left-hand column and the body of my page in the right-hand column. Now when I created this site, I did the first page and then I just did a file save as and I used all of the code from my first page for my other two pages, which I'll show you in a minute, and then just modified because there's no reason to hand code everything from scratch because I wanted the same format on each page. You'll notice that I've set background colors here, which is red, but the table has its own background color, which I picked up from the blue in my image. So let's take a look at the source code for this. I have done some very simple styling because this portion of the class is focusing on XHTML and HTML. We'll get heavily into style sheets later, but I did do a style portion in my header to set the body background color and the font family to Arial, Helvetica, and Sans Serif. Usability studies show that it is significantly easier for people to read sans serif fonts on the screen, so you should use those. Then I've set the background color for my table, and I've set the font size for my anchors, my link tags, and I've set it to 1.3 EM. EM is based on the default browser settings, and it's basically 130% of the normal browser text size, so it will just, based on if somebody's hitting the command plus to enlarge or subtract the regular font size. So there's some adjustment that the user can do. So I've created everything in a table and I've aligned the table to the center, which gives you this viewpoint where you can see that it has a body background, which sort of makes a frame around it and the table acts like a container. We can do the same thing with CSS, which we'll get to the next time we make a complete website. And then in my top row, I've set the column span to two so that my masthead image goes all the way across the page. And then I have set the vertical line to top. This is in my next row. And the reason that I did that is because I did not want my links floating down here in the middle. I wanted my links to come up to the top. So by doing a vertical line of top, that pulls my links up to the top. So I have a column here for my links, and I have a column here for the main body content. And then the main body content, you can see where the, inks, the links end here. And then I have my alt tags, my image. I'm using my alignment to align left, have the text float to the right of it, and I have again at the bottom used a table definition with a or for a cell with a call span of two so that you'll see that my footer goes all the way across and I include a horizontal row here. And if we go to the website you'll see that I have a complete web page in here. Looks pretty good. Very simple. This is the font is based, the font size since it's an M is based that my font size is a little larger in here and you'll see that I've actually take the, taken the exact same structure 
for each of the pages. And that one needs, nope, there it is. The alt tags show up before the images and you can, they would also show up if you had a browser that didn't show the images or if you had graphics turned off. So this is a very simple web page based on a table and what you will do for this week's lesson is you'll create one, put your links in, and once you have the first page created, you want to do a save as or copy the code into new pages and that way you can just modify because you'll notice England I've switched which sides the images are floating to but other than that home and Ireland are set up exactly the same way I've just changed the content which is much simpler than recoding the whole thing by hand so I want you to use everything that you've learned up to this point and do a basic three page website on any topic use your own photos I use my vacation photos because I'm very aware of copyright law and I do not want to use anybody else's images by using photos that I've taken myself I'm being assured that I have not violated any copyright laws so these are my photos and I want you to create a website of your own three pages any topic use images on each page use a table layout use heading tags use some basic I want you to at least style the fonts and the background colors using style sheets and put them up. Now if you look at the directory you'll have to make sure that you upload all of your images and there are some problems with Composer because it would not let me create a separate file folder to store all of my, all of my images in. I can create it but it won't upload properly. So I have my main page as lesson 6-3 and then I have two other pages which I've named Ireland and England. So I've got Ireland and England and they're all in the same directory and that's one of the reasons that we're going to be leaving Composer. So create your website, upload it, and then we'll be getting into HTML5 next and then we'll get really heavily into cascading style sheets and when we do that you will be, create a site based on a cascading style sheet layout which you haven't learned yet.